What's going on everybody, it's Carmine from Barmine Tech, and today we're going to be talking about how to use Wireshark. We're going to do a very beginner's guide of the basics of using Wireshark and how to understand what it's doing. So I used Wireshark in a video a couple weeks ago when we were trying to figure out what the Proxmox Helper Scripts local manager was doing, and I was able to look through Wireshark and see the packets going back and forth between my machine and over to the helper script. Somebody commented down below, one of the active users in the Discord, and I figured why not make a video talking about some of the uses of Wireshark and what we could do with it on a local machine. So that's what we're gonna be doing today. Like I said, it's gonna be a very beginner's guide, more of how do I get Wireshark working? How do I start to capture? How do I start to analyze some traffic? There are some very in-depth videos on YouTube already of people explaining how to set color code and rules and, and all this very more detailed stuff that just to get Wireshark working and understand how to start analyzing some network traffic, we don't really need. So that's what we're gonna do today, just a really how to get Wireshark working out of the box and start being able to analyze some traffic. So that's what we're gonna do. So let's get right into it. First thing you need to do, if you don't already have Wireshark is we just need to search Wireshark and come over to their website wireshark.org and we can just come over here and download whichever distribution of it's going to work for your system the best so like I have a Windows system so that's what I downloaded after you get that downloaded we can just click to run it and it's going to come up and work like this now the installer is going to go through it's a pretty simple process it is going to ask you if you want to install USB capturing it's up to you what you want to do. I just did regular because I don't really need to capture my USB traffic. So after that's all done, you can sit here and you can run it. And now we have the first screen that's going to look like this. So I just want to talk about some of the practical uses of Wireshark a little bit more. So as I've mentioned multiple times, I'm a network engineer and identifying network traffic is something that I do very often. I get requests very often of, hey, can we see if this traffic's being blocked? Can we see where this traffic's going? Stuff like that. In industry, we have tools like firewall analyzers, depending on the firewall system, or we can look in the logs for different networking equipment, and I can correlate what's going on from what host to what host, and I can see if it's being blocked or the path it's going and stuff like that. At home, you might not have stuff like that. I don't have a tool that I can go through and see all the traffic on my network being blocked or where the stuff for my PC is going. This is something where Wireshark can come in and fill that gap. So you can install Wireshark on your PC and tell it, hey, listen over this interface, which is going to be the network back to your router, let's say, or your core network, or whichever network it might be, and it's going to analyze all the packets going back and forth and capture them. From there, we can sit here and we can scroll through and we can analyze everything and see what kind of traffic's going on. And let's say we're having an issue where we're not reaching a server. We can see where that traffic's going when we're trying to target that server, whether it's being dropped off or it's maybe it's being reverted and going somewhere else. Maybe we have a portion of an application that's not working properly. We could run a Wireshark capture while we're trying to run that application, and then we can identify, hey, this traffic's getting dropped off, or it's not routing properly, or it's just being dropped completely. This is the benefits of Wireshark, especially as a, a home user. So that's what we're going to talk about a little bit today, because it's going to be a little bit easier down the road when you need to troubleshoot some of your network connections. So I'm going to go back over to Wireshark, and we're going to start talking about some stuff over there. So after you get Wireshark installed and opened up, you're going to get over to a screen that looks like this, and there's a lot of different information to look at right off the start. So up here we have our toolbar. So this is going to be all the different tools we could use to analyze traffic after we actually start capturing some traffic. So you can see a lot of it's grayed out because there is no use for it just yet. The first one we really need to do is you have this little shark fin over here that's going to capture. So I just want to stop. I don't want to capture any traffic yet. Over here, we start having the actual interfaces that we can capture traffic over as well as we can capture using a filter. So if we're trying to only capture certain traffic going to a certain host, we could do so by applying this filter right off the start. So instead of capturing everything going across the interface, it's only going to capture stuff, let's say I want to go to my router, so I can only capture stuff going to my router. We would still have a lot of stuff going to it because it's going to be routing all the traffic from your PC everywhere else. But that wasn't a great example. When we come down, you can see there are additional interfaces and you may have way more, you may have way less. You may have a wireless one if you're on a laptop or you have a wireless adapter. Primarily, you're probably gonna be capturing traffic over your ethernet unless you're trying to troubleshoot like a VPN connection or something else. The easiest way to identify which interfaces you're gonna be working with, as you can see that over here, this is indicating there's traffic pumping across these interfaces. These don't. So if I start trying to capture over here, I'm not really gonna see much. If I come over here, we can see on my ethernet there is a ton of traffic pumping through and I should be able to see some stuff going through. So if I want to apply a capture filter, like I said, to only capture traffic to certain hosts, I could do so here. Or if I only want to capture 
TCP traffic or UDP traffic, or I only want to capture 443 traffic, I could apply a filter right here and I can limit. So the only thing I'm going to see in my capture or my PCAP file is going to be HTTPS or 443 traffic, let's say. So I'll show you how we can do that really quick. So like I said, we want to just capture HTTP or 443 traffic. So you can see I can type it in. And if you noticed, it went from red to green. So if a filter or the syntax of what you're typing isn't right, it's going to come up as a red. So you see like it's missing something. So that's why it's red. And then when I have it proper, it goes green. So I could just apply that and I should be capturing over the primary interface. I did, I selected it already, so it should be good. So you can see we're actually starting to capture some traffic up here. So these are the packets going across. I'm just going to open up some web traffic and try to generate some more web traffic over here. I'm just going to bump this over so we can start really seeing what's going on. And now you can see there is a significant amount of traffic starting to pump through. So I'll just drag this back over here. Come over to Google. Let's search up Barmine Tech. And here we go. You can see here's Barmine Tech. And I think we've probably captured a good amount of traffic. There's going to be a ton of packets to filter through. But let's take a look really quick at that. So I paused the video really quickly, but when you want to stop capturing you can see right up here there's going to be a red square and we're going to do another capture in a minute and i'll show you the process but that's how you would stop capturing and now we can start to actually look through our traffic so like i said if it's your first time using wireshark or maybe you're not super familiar with it this can look very daunting uh, in the beginning i had no idea really how to use wireshark and i'm still not super proficient in it but I can sit here and get by and start to analyze some traffic. So if we start looking at the information we just captured, we have all of the packets up here. This is where we're going to be able to see a lot of the information start. So we have the number of the packet we're looking at. So it starts at one and goes all the way up to the end of the capture. We have the time. This is going to be the time from the start of the capture. We have the source, the destination, the protocol, the length, and then we have some information about what the packet might be. Now, if you notice, some of this stuff's kind of jammed up. If we come over here, it will untruncate everything and kind of neaten it up a little bit. Or you can, of course, just drag it over here if you want certain sizes as well. So this is, of course, all the packets. Over here is where we're going to have the details of the packets. We can actually break it open and we can see stuff like the header and the TLS information and stuff like this. And then over here is going to be the information on the bytes of the packet. If we come up to edit and preferences we can come over to layout and we can start to actually change some of this stuff if there's certain items you want to see over other ones you could do so so like if i want to change this into packet diagram i could do that over here and then if i close this out you can see now i have this easier to read diagram of the packet so let's say i come over here and i click a packet so if i have this option on and you can see it's now it's starting to populate if it doesn't you could just right click and show view values and you can see it kind of goes away so I could refresh it and now we can have an easier breakdown of the actual packet of what we're trying to read. So I could see the destination. I could see some of the internal information just broken down a little bit easier to read and we could get some more information about our payload. So this is an easier way that we can kind of break down what we're looking for. Now on the left over here, like I said, we're going to have some more information about the actual packet itself. We're going to really be able to deep dive into stuff like the frames and the headers and everything like this. For the most part, this may not be what you need to troubleshoot your network connection in your house, but if it is, you should be able to find for the most part what you're looking for in here. Starting over here, we have the top of the frame and then we have just some of the typical network information. So I'm going to close this out, but over here we can actually see that the source. So this is going to tell me the source of where my traffic was originating from and where it's going to. We're going to have the MAC addresses of both. And then we're going to have the additional packet information below of like where it was going. So you can see source, destination. So this is coming from, I'm going to bet a Microsoft ad address because we were using Edge and a 52 is usually Microsoft's network. And it's coming back over here to my local PC. But this is how we can go through and we can start the troubleshoot. Let's say we're having a connection issue and we can see, like I said, originally this is all 443 traffic, but we can see like, here's the X. So the traffic's going back and forth. It's forming a handshake. Here's our sins. Here's our sin X. We can see traffic's flowing across and we can continue to go through and we can really sit here and filter through a lot of this traffic and we can you know, start to find other stuff. So like I said, a lot of this stuff's color coded and you can change it as you want, but they do have over here like these black with red characters. This is usually indicating an error. And if you want to see the current color coding rules, you can come over to view, color and rules, and this is the default ones that are set up. So you can kind of match it up to what's currently going on. 
So it looks like we have a checksum error going back and forth with the web page that I was on. But we can continue to scroll through and we can see the protocols and stuff like that. So now let's say I want to display a filter and I want to filter this traffic further to have an idea of what's going on. Now, like I said, there was a lot of quick traffic as we can see. And I want to kind of filter through that. So let's say I want to just search for quick. I can just type in quick and I can see over here, this is all the traffic for quick. So now we can see it's going back and forth between the sources and the destinations. So we can see it's going back and forth between my computers as I was browsing the internet. So now if we're trying to troubleshoot like internal connections, we could do so too. So I'm going to go over and start a new capture and we're going to filter some more stuff while I do some internal work. So we're back over here and we're at the original screen. I want to capture generic traffic over my ethernet and I want to start doing some stuff in my home lab so we can see some of the internal stuff. This is where we'll be able to see a little bit more because like we'll have some HTTP connections and stuff like that. So we can kind of see some more detail in Wireshark. So I'm going to select Ethernet. I'm not going to have the capture filter because I want to capture everything. And then I'm going to come up here to the top to start capturing and I'm going to do that. Now over here I'm going to open up Edge again. And we're going to have probably some other data falling in here because of what I'm currently doing. But if I come over here to like mini backup, I'll sign into mini backup. I'll come over here to mini lab. We'll sign in over here as well. And we'll start messing through with some stuff. Like I'll open up a, I'll start this back up. So we'll start up the PV scripts local. And now this is HTTP when I go into the console. So we should be able to actually see some stuff. So I'm gonna let this load and then I'm gonna go in and we'll show how we can capture some more traffic. So I'm gonna go over to the scripts manager. This is the older one. So over here I am in the script manager and hopefully I remember my password. But you can see I'm going to have some failed login attempts. And over here you can see it's a not secure connection. We're using HTTP. So all this is gonna show plain text in this wire chart capture that I'm doing. So if I come back over here, we can start seeing that there's going to be significant amount of traffic going through. And I'm going to actually going to pause this in a minute because we should have a good amount. And then we can start to break down and analyze what we see. So now that we have a good amount of traffic captured, and this is going to be some of the internal stuff. So let's say we're trying to troubleshoot my connection over to the server. We could do so over here. So if I'm trying to just limit this to like my IP address, so I can come over here to apply as filter and we can select it. And now you can see it's just going to filter everything going out over my IP address. I can clear that out. And similarly, let's say I have the 157 address. So this is actually the PVE scripts. I can come over here again, apply as filter, and I can select that. So now it's going to show me everything where the destination is just going to be for this host. So like I was saying, this is how we can kind of break down and start seeing like fit my failed logins you can see my password was wrong so i'm just going to change this back over to the bytes and then we can have a better idea of what we're looking for so now looking through here we can see i moved it over to bytes and we can see we're starting to actually see some plain text because this website is in http and if i keep scrolling through at some point we should be able to find some plain text of like my login and my password so this is what you could do and you can sit here and you can scroll through your Wireshark captures and you can kind of have an idea of what's going on. But this is how like we can filter it so we're only seeing stuff go into this host. Uh, we can apply a lot of different filters like I did before. We can filter it by only TCP traffic. We could filter it by only UDP traffic. We could filter it by quick. I mean, we could do whatever you want, but this is kind of like a really brief overview of how we can start to look through and we can have an idea of what's going on in Wireshark. Now, luckily we do live in a great time of a lot of online resources between forums, but the big ones are like ChatGPT and maybe Gemini and whatever other ones. You can go over to them and be like, how do I filter to see this kind of traffic? How do I filter to see from this specific host to this specific host and it'll help you come up with the proper syntax for these flags to filter out this traffic this is how you would get a capture going and you could start actually coming through and looking for you know what kind of what's going on in your network you know so like i can still see there's a ton of other stuff so like here is here you go so here's some plain text username bar mine enable has credentials so right there is plain text of my username going through now, of course, this is just one example if you're trying to analyze some traffic. The idea is more of using it to try to figure out what's wrong with the network than try to you know, find credentials or stuff like that. But there's just one of the easier examples that I could show in this video right here. So that's how we use Wireshark. Like I said, I just want to make a really brief overview of how to use Wireshark. It's a very daunting app to use if you aren't very familiar with it or you're not very familiar with breaking down network traffic. But really at its core, it's really simple once you understand some of the basics. I hope you guys did enjoy this video. And if you did, maybe we can work on doing some more advanced Wireshark 
tools later on in another video but today was just going to be more of a brief one to go over some basic stuff like I already said. As always, I want to thank you all for watching. I'll have all the gear in my home lab linked down below, as well as a link to the Discord server if you want to join up over there. Again, I want to thank you all for watching. I'll see you in the next video. And as my buddy Don would say, hack till it hurts.